Good morning, my darlings, from a very sleepy looking and very puffy faced <laughs> Josie. It is Sunday morning. I hope you're all doing well and you are having a wonderful day so far. It is Sunday morning. We've had a lovely lion and I have a confession. This is the first time in 48 hours that I have not felt <laughs> Like I have been hit by the hangover train. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm not sure if my vlogs are in the right order. I think they are. So I think the last vlog clip you'll have seen was um, a little clip from Victoria's Edge of Ember launch dinner. Let's just say a lot of fun was had that evening and a lot of wine was consumed. <laughs> And I spent all of Friday in bed <laughs> and I'm just not used to it, I cannot cope. So today's my first day feeling back to normal, although still a little bit puffy. So I'm determined to catch up on um, life. <laughs> Friday was a total wipeout. I was meant to have filmed a video on Friday, but there was no chance of that happening. So hopefully I'm gonna film a video a bit later on today. I don't usually like to work so much on Sundays, um, but it's only a maybe, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna force myself. But of course, the Fashion Mumbler weather forecast, it is a beautiful day. So we're gonna start this morning with a glorious walk. We're just gonna walk through the village to um, the place near us that serves breakfast baps, so that'll be nice. So that'll be lovely. I've also been researching pumpkin patches near us this morning. Local Facebook groups are just the best thing ever. You have any question about your local area, you just pop it in your Facebook group and people come to your rescue. So I'm not sure if we're gonna have time to do that today, but hopefully in the next couple of days, we're gonna visit a pick your own farm um, and get some pumpkins because I really want some for decorating the house with. Just like tablescapes and also to make a pumpkin soup and a pumpkin risotto. We did actually get our Cotswold veg box delivery yesterday. I found them on Facebook as well. I think it was an, actually a Facebook ad or maybe an Instagram ad. It's just a local kind of collective of farmers and you get local produce and it's really, really good value. I think I paid 20 pounds for a massive veg box and then this time I chose to get three pumpkins as well. I think they were like two pound 50 each. So I was expecting them to be about like melon size. Oh no, they are bigger, bigger than a basketball. They are huge, I'll show you those later. So I've got some pumpkin recipes that I'm gonna be concocting a bit later on as well. Again, not sure if I'll be doing it today, but over the next couple of days, it's gonna get very, very autumnal here on the channel. Do I have any home updates for you? Ooh, I can show you the progress in the office room. Hopefully that will get painted um, in the next couple of weeks. I know Andrew has another job that he's on this week coming up. So it'll probably be the following week. So, but I'll show you how it looks primed. The condition of the walls is just a million times better. And I also have a couple of new coats to show you. I think the video I might film later is gonna be all around autumn wardrobe basics. So I have been preparing and researching, that is what I call shopping these days, <laughs> to bring you some amazing wardrobe basics. But first, let me show you what I am wearing for this lovely, sunny Sunday morning, ready for our dog walk. Oh, my face is so puffy and I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It's still the wine. <laughs> Okay, so I've just got on a super casual outfit. Um, this is my knit from Reese. I think it's really lovely. It's nice and sporty. I love this high neck. And I've actually got a skin colored thermal on underneath. This knit is not itchy, but it's more comfortable, I would say, with a thermal on underneath. So I've got that tucked into my leggings, super sexy. And then these are actually a chocolate brown legging. These are from the Sweaty Betty autumn collection and then of course because we're going for a walk I've got my cashmere socks on these are really 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 old actually embarrassingly old they're all bobbly and they're actually starting to wear away on the heels so i need to get myself some new cashmere socks and not shrink them in the washing machine because that is what i keep doing how lovely 
does our fireplace area look? So we have the beautiful hydrangeas downstairs from Arena Flowers. Just realized I can actually brighten on the camera. Um, so these are the hydrangeas that we used to have downstairs and they look beautiful in our fireplace. So I'm gonna put an older coat on to go for our dog walk, but I'm just trying on some coats um, that I ordered from Stan Studio. So you may remember I ordered the white teddy coat from them from Farfetch and I loved it so much and I was so impressed with the quality. Do we need the lights on? Possibly. Um, I was so impressed with the quality versus the price that I thought I would check out some of their other designs. So this is a really, really gorgeous one. As you can see, it's like a cream borg material. Um, you've got the brown buttons, which are kind of like, they almost look like wood, but they are not. And then you've got this brown suede. I perfectly match my surroundings. In fact, I could actually, if I stood in the right place, look as though I'm part of the wall. <laughs> Part of the panelling. Yeah, there we go. Wow, you can tell my brain is still a bit foggy. <laughs> but I really, really like this, and I think this is the kind of coat that not only, I mean, at the moment I would obviously use it as a smart coat, but in a few years down the line, when it's a couple of years old, it'd be a really lovely coat for going out for nice, crisp country walks. And it's not too bulky either. It's actually only like that thick, so you don't feel totally weighed down and unable to move, which I think sometimes is a little bit of a problem with Borg coats, but this feels so gorgeous. Still got the tags in at the moment. <clears throat> and then on the inside, it's that brown shade as well. So if you wanna wear it a bit more open, then that is really lovely. So this is coat number one. I actually have three new coats. No, I have more. I have four new coats to show you. Um, but this one, yes, I purchased from Farfetch. Oh, wow. Okay, this is everything that I hoped it was going to be and more. It is the perfect teddy coat. Oh my gosh. By the way, I have only just discovered that I can lighten up my camera. This is going to be a bit of a game changer. I'm all, I noticed it was set on a dark setting before and I've just boosted the light settings, dear lord. After four years of owning the Canon G7X, you'd think I know how to use it. But yeah, this is just the absolute hug in a coat. It's obviously faux fur, but it looks so high quality. It almost looks like real fur. And I don't know how I feel about that, but it looks very, very luxurious. This beautiful big lapel, gorgeous, the same kind of almost wood effect buttons. Again, very similar color to the banisters. It's like an oak brown shade. It looks really nice with a white knit underneath. And if I tie it up a little, this is truly absolutely gorgeous. It honestly is so, so comfortable. Quite long on the arms. That's my only slight niggle. I would prefer the arms to be a tiny bit shorter, but we all know how much I love a coat that resembles a dressing gown. <laughs> so I feel super cozy when out and about. And yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's one that I feel like from Max Mara, you would pay between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds or something like this. It is from a premium designer, a slightly less well-known premium designer, but yeah, less, less than a third, I would say, of what you would pay for a Max Mara coat. This is absolutely gorgeous. I feel like this is gonna be me for the rest of autumn now. Leggings, cashmere socks, super fluffy coat, and some boots on, oh my goodness. I really ought to put something a bit more practical on for our walk, but, I'm not sure I can bear to take it off. Our arena flowers are looking spectacular, but arguably even more spectacular <laughs> is this setup. Charlie is doing his roast again today. We have mum over and we have got a pork shoulder, I believe that is. I think he's already popped it in for the initial half hour blast and then it's gonna slow cook for the rest of, well, the next few hours. We've got lots of fresh veg from our Cotswold veg box in the trivet some locally grown carrots. And let me tell you, this room smells like absolute heaven. Oh, you're from Walkie's little boy. <laughs>
day we are back from our walk and as promised I thought I would show you the current state of the office bedroom. So as I mentioned earlier this room is going to be painted. If you remember it used to be cream but the paintwork in here had not been done very well at all. In fact it was really kind of thick and globular <laughs> around these edges which was such a shame because it was painted a fairly nice colour and we could potentially have left it but the, the actual way that it had been painted it just been slapped on quickly to sell the house. This wood here was also so thirsty and dry so Andrew has, um, I think it was Liberon oil in fact it's probably this, yeah Liberon finishing oil, he's popped loads of that on these beams and this one up here, and I'm not going to lie, the whole house now smells of Liberon oil, um, but it will soften in colour a little bit. It'll probably match the floor in a week or so. This floor is so beautiful. We are so lucky to have this floor all throughout the house. Um, the fireplace looks even more dramatic in contrast to the walls, but this is just the primer. Um, this is a very, very, very quick, literally, like Andrew had 10 minutes before he needed to go home on Friday, and he just whacked a really quick bit on um, just to show us the colour. And obviously it's going to be a much more intense colour than that. This is quite patchy, but we absolutely love it. And this is fairly similar to the colour that this room was originally. So we're quite happy to be kind of bringing it back to its original colour. And the shade that we've gone for, or will be going for, is the Forest Vista. This is from the L Decoration um, collaboration with Crown. And this is the one that we've got, which is the perfect finish for protection for walls and wood, flat matte emulsion. So that's going to be perfect. This is what's on the walls at the moment. Quick dry primer undercoat in dark grey. That was the one that we recommended. There were a few of the different greens that we tried out. But yeah, it's going to look so opulent and gorgeous in here. I think the green is going to go so nicely with the walls. Really, really lovely. And this room at this time of day, when it's sunny, it is just spectacular. It's going to be the most gorgeous office. We're going to have a beautiful desk in the middle. We've got the two, we've currently got one leather armchair, leather office chair. We've got some storage units coming. It really is going to be a very, very special room. We are about T minus five minutes for Charlie's epic roast of the week. His speakerbage going into the Le Creuset. Every time I feature this on my stories, darling, we get so many questions for a tutorial. We will have to do one. Yeah, we'll maybe. We'll have to film it in the week. Yeah. It's pretty hectic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to need you to start taking things through, darling. Okie dokie. Hi darlings, it is now Monday morning and as you can probably predict, yesterday ended in us just being so full from what was possibly the best roast in the whole history of the world um, that I did not pick up the camera yesterday afternoon. So we have a rollover, this vlog is going to be a two-dayer. I have driven a good 45 minutes this morning to the patch in Milton Keynes um, because I really wanted to tick that cliche Instagram box and get some photos at a pumpkin patch. Unfortunately for me, it is the most miserable day in the world. Thankfully I have got the coziest coat in the world and some very big umbrellas. Kat is meeting us here and then we're going to drive back to the house together so hopefully we will get some gorgeous shots. Typical yesterday was the most beautiful day in the whole world. Blue skies, perfect crisp autumn day but today is just miserable so let's see what magic we can work i don't know if i'll be able to show you any behind the scenes because i can't leave my camera out in the rain um but yeah hopefully we can show you a little bit of a sneak peek because it looks really cool here they've got loads of pumpkins there is actually a pumpkin patch much closer to our house but this was kind of halfway between cat and where we live so yeah we're starting here and fingers crossed we can get some really nice shots.
the pumpkin patch for about an hour or so now. I'm joined with gorgeous Cat again, who is dressed as a marshmallow today. <laughs> We're both dressed as marshmallows because it is actually pretty chilly. Um, it's actually a really, really cool pumpkin patch. We've just got oops, some snaps with a wheelbarrow. There's a vintage tractor over there. There's a pumpkin sign. There's a pumpkin house. And I did not choose the best footwear to march through a pumpkin field but we've got our loot in our wheelbarrow and now we're going home to make a pumpkin risotto hello my little snowball look at that floofy chasing Oh, I'm not having my brother get kisses and me not have kisses. Hello again, darlings. It's a few hours later and goodness me, that light is orange. It's gonna be blue here. <laughs> so back home again and we have done, had a very productive afternoon snapping and I got through 194 emails <laughs> this afternoon, so feeling very productive. Now, I'm gonna make my pumpkin risotto. I'm literally just following the Thermomix pumpkin recipe, pumpkin risotto recipe without the bacon. So essentially, Alexa, switch off. So essentially it's a really simple risotto recipe, like their, their classic Parmesan um, risotto with a few peas and some pumpkin as well. I will leave the recipe linked down below in case any of you have also got a Thermomix. I'm a little bit nervous about chopping the pumpkin. This is the one that was in my Cotswold veg box. Um, I thought I would use those up first before using the ones from the patch today. So yes, let's give it a go. A tutorial. And then slice your pumpkin all around by oh my God. the pumpkin and then around that super sharp knife. Okay. Eventually you're gonna get all the way around the pumpkin and, and then it's the easier to just pull, pull it apart and then it's time to What are you doing in there, little lens? as well as the pumpkin which we're using for the risotto. From the third of the pumpkin that I have sliced off, I have got this much pumpkin flesh, and that's not including the pumpkin that I'm using for the risotto. So this is such an affordable way to feed yourself and your family at this time of year. I think I paid £2.50 for this pumpkin, which is crazy. I could do pumpkin curry, pumpkin mac and cheese, pumpkin soup, pumpkin risotto, pumpkin puree. There are so many pumpkin recipes online, so yeah, I have got all the rest of this to chop up, two more this size, and then the ones we got from the pumpkin patch today, so it's safe to say I'm officially on a pumpkin diet. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the pumpkin risotto recipe in another video, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing with some of the um, seeds from the inside. As you can see, I haven't collected all of them just yet, so first of all I'm popping them in here, which is just a saucepan with a little bit of salt in the water. I'm going to leave them in there for about five minutes just to soften up a little bit. Okay I've got them out of the water, drained them and I'm now just making sure they're nice and dry with, um, what's the word, a tea towel, get rid of any moisture. Then what I'm going to do is pop them on the baking, pa baking paper and cover them in a spice of your choice. Chili flakes work really well, a bit of salt but I'm just going to use some of this allspice and pop them in the agar for about 10 minutes. Adding a little bit of olive oil. Whoa. Just transfer them onto a bigger baking tray. Now adding my allspice. 
10 minutes later and we have some toasty seeds and I've just tried a couple and they are delicious. So I'm now going to pop these in some Tupperware and enjoy them over the next couple of days.